Yeah, so uh, hi, I'm, I'm Joe Pierce. Glad to, uh, to join you uh, this afternoon. Um, today, we're going to talk about navigating agile human resources and, and how can we harness leadership support to do that. We do have a we do have a question here. You'll see thoughts yeah. on job posting. Just wanted to give you FYI that was in the Q and A part. Yeah, go for it. You go for it. I'll be keep my mouth quiet. Yeah. So 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 very good, very good. And so, really, in the world of agile human resources, we we think through what role does leadership play. And my perspective for today is that leaders played a a critical role. Not only do they help our employees feel respected and valued, but they have to set the culture of the organization. They set the culture to, uh, to learn and to grow. So one of the first things I want to talk about was, was creating an environment where people feel valued and respected. And, um, and, and how do we do that? Um, one, one of the key concepts I, I want to address is that and I'll come back to the, the chat questions, but, but how can leaders empower agile HR by creating that environment? And I'll just, I'll throw that out there as a question and I'll, I'll open it up to see what are your thoughts on that? Um, so the, the first topic really is psychological safety. And that is where leaders can, can, create an immediate impact to, to come in and make sure that they're doing a few things well. Um, and, and so in order to do that, I think psychological safety has to do with creating an environment at the job for all employees that ensures that not only they feel valued and respected, that the leaders are also modeling that same behavior. Um, they create that, uh, that culture of continuous improvement they allow teams uh, within Agile to, uh, to create that self-direction and autonomy. And, and that sometimes that's a hard place to get to. And so in that pathway to create that, uh, you know, collaborative and inclusive environment, um, they also have to deliver value. And organizations, all organizations, whether they're human resource, they are creating something of value. And they're delivering value and achieving organizational goals. So today we're going to talk about how leaders can support that, how we can have a positive impact on employee experience and promote some organizational outcomes. Um, so uh, one question I already saw in the chat is thoughts on job postings for scrum masters that are filled with anti-patterns. Can you tell me a little bit more? What do you mean? Or if someone wants to, to explain that a little bit better uh, or clarify your question a little bit. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, while you're thinking on that, I will, uh, in the chat is tell me some things that from your perspective that leaders can do that promote that psychological safety in the workplace. And then we can, we can talk about those. And so one of the keys here for me is engagement with you guys. And uh, I'll, I'll elaborate. Yeah, Terrell, thank you. Leaders set priorities and provide guidance which should focus HR efforts across the organization. Yeah. So I, I like that. Terrell, and, and one of the things he's talking about is, is prioritization. And so leaders help set the priorities. Um, and those priorities come from a deep understanding of the organization. They also come from uh, feedback and collaboration. Yeah, Terrera says transparency in everything. Yeah, and I think that... Uh, you know, one of the things that we talk, think about in leadership and, and transparency is transparency is also helping to explain to your organization so everybody has the same understanding. It's that same, same understanding that empowers your people, your teams, empowers decision making. Um, if your employees understand the why, then you can, uh, you'll have 
corporate buy-in and everybody's moving towards the same goals and objectives. Um, another thing that as, as we think about this is, um, uh, what is uh, Barbie says, leaders set the tone by modeling correct behaviors, responding to productivity, responding productively to failure and conducting blameless postmortems that prioritize learning over finding someone to blame. Very good. And so that is that is a very agile way to look at that, uh, Barbie. And I appreciate that. And so agile is all, all about having the right mindset. And so leaders have to come to the place where they reward the vulnerability is what they're talking about. They reward vulnerability. And, and when you make an error, because errors are going to happen because we're human, is that you're not, it's not a punishment response. It's more of a, a continuous improvement response. We've, we've, we've messed this up this time. The good news is we're in the agile world, we're working in small chunks, small bites or iterations. And when we work in those small bites, we're allowed to make mistakes. We, we fail earlier and faster, and then we can correct those mistakes on the way. So we welcome the change and we have to fix it. And that's what Barbie was talking about is not just blaming each other, but, but actually being proactive and fixing it. Uh, Megan says compassion and communication is huge. Yeah, and I think from my perspective, and I've been in a lot of organizations, uh, you know, compassion and, and communication are huge. Uh, most leadership competencies all deal with, with communication. And so uh, I call that that compassion and communication is that empathy or emotional intelligence. And so you have to have a little bit of emotional intelligence. So, so that's not only knowing the strengths and weaknesses of your team, but that's also knowing the strengths and weaknesses of yourself. And so you have to know what you're good at, what you're bad at, what you need to continue to work on and make a commitment just to fix one or two things each time. Uh, Kelly says mutual respect and an open forum for all ideas. I love that um, because when leaders model that mutual respect, they model the behaviors they want to see in employees. Employees are much more likely to bring up their concerns, their feedback, uh, and ideas. And so all this, I'm going to shift to the next kind of topic, but psychological safety is one of the biggest things that leaders can do to help shape their, um, the, to shape the human resource process and the agile human resource processes when, within their organizations. And so uh, all this I do teach, uh, we have a, a course through SoftEd uh, that we teach agile human resource fundamentals, great course. Uh, I would welcome any of you to attend, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, the next, the next kind of topic I want to throw out there is fostering a culture of continuous improvement. So, so once we know it's safe, and we have folks that are employees that want to contribute, we can now foster a culture of continuous improvement. And it kind of, we kind of talked about that before. I think it was Barbie who said. Um, going back to the, the, you know, responding productively to failure. And so the agile methodology is about continuous improvement. So we might make some, some mistakes, but we fix those fairly rapidly. Um, so leaders, leaders have to play a, a key role in, in fostering continuous improvement. Um, Someone also said this in here is that, that leaders help prioritize those goals. And so if leaders can be effective, they can, they can prioritize goals and objectives, describe that clearly within their teams so that everybody understands what that process is. Uh, leaders also help, help uh, coach and mentor at times. Anybody else have any thoughts on how do we foster this continuous improvement, this idea of we have to get better?
personally, one of the things that I've always uh, liked within my teams is, is something as simple. This is a simple mantra. And I think that leaders all can adopt their own. But one of the ones I've, all, I've used in the past was get better every day. And so if you can get better every day, that allows you to understand one thing that you did wrong. You might have a long uh, after action review, post-mortem or retrospective, and you've identified a few things that didn't go as well during the last iteration. And so getting it better every day means, okay, we're just going to commit to one or two of those things. Um, Megan says, keeping an open mind and knowing you won't always have the best idea. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, I believe that in most organizations, you have a group of smart people. And if you only have one person who's doing all the thinking and everybody else is just writing down their ideas, you're really limiting your, your team's ability to, to do work. And so by keeping that open mind, um, going back to my continuous improvement is you have to get, you have to get uh, feedback and and also you can collaborate effectively with, with your teams. And so those are, those are a couple of things that leaders can do. They can analyze and say, where, where are we getting feedback? If you're not getting feedback from anywhere, then again, you're going back to only the leader is, is doing all the thinking. And then finally, the collaboration. And leaders have to design those collaborative engagements. And oftentimes that's done through putting putting the right people, the right building the right cross-functional team to solve HR problems. And also it is, is taking a look, is, is my communication effective? And oftentimes, sometimes when you do the analysis of that communication, you realize we're, we're not effectively communicating. I'm not getting feedback from uh, stakeholders or employees. Okay, great. So the kind of the next topic I want to throw out there is a very agile term, and it is autonomy and self-direction. And so when we build teams in agile, whether it's to solve a human resource problem or it is to solve another problem, it is we build what we call a cross-functional team. So we, we pull people from uh, various disciplines and expertise, and we put them together to be able to help have different ways of thinking to collaborate to solve a problem. So um, leaders can help leaders can help their cross-functional teams by empowering them to do the planning, designing, develop, and delivery. Uh, they can give ownership to these teams. These teams allow are and empowering them to, to, to do the work, to uh, motivate them to, to deliver things of value. Um, any, any thoughts on autonomy and self-direction? How are you? How are organizations solving human resource problems? Are are you are you coming together to build a cross functional team and 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 thinking through uh, any of these challenges? We'll pause here for a second. Okay, great. Thank you, Sean. Sean says that uh, many of the responsibilities posted on Scrum Master postings are, yes, they're counterproductive to creating self-organized cross-functional teams. So yeah, I've, I have seen a lot of that. And so when we look at, uh, and, and, and I'm personally a, a, a Scrum Master as well. So, so I think that oftentimes we have to think beyond just the job description and think about what 
competencies and talents do we need to bring to our organization? And so I challenge organizations. Uh, one of the exercises that we do in my agile uh, human resource fundamental class is we, we do an employee journey map. And you can look at it from different perspectives. So you can look at it in terms of the employee and you can look at it in terms of the organization and you can kind of map out what an employee may be thinking, feeling, doing during that time. And then as well as you could look at it from the organization and say, what skills, what competencies do I need an initial entry scrub master to do from our organization? And so when you kind of compare it and contrast both of those perspectives, I think you can, it will drive you to not just have a, a very generic uh, scrum master job posting. And I think that that's, that's kind of the, the hard part is, you know, we get caught up in the title of what someone is and their pay grade versus the competencies that we're expecting them to be able to do. Anybody else, any thoughts on that? That's a, that's a great question. Um, I know we, I'm sure we have some human resource professionals in the group. Any thoughts on just, just that as we're talking about uh, autonomy and self-direction within teams? How, how can we promote that even in the, I'll just say the hiring and onboarding process? And so as, as you're thinking about that, um, yeah, even during the hiring and onboarding process, we can, we can take a look at uh, how do we set a new person to our organization? How do, we, how do we get them adjusted to our organizational goals? How do we do things? Um, do we allow them to have uh, some on-the-job training? Do, are they allowed to, are, are we going to pair them with an, an existing person in that position? There you go. And this is exactly what I was getting at. Thank you, Kelly. Are we going to allow them to do some shadowing? Um, Terrell said sponsoring. All, all great. And so all organizations don't have that. Um, some organizations just drop someone right into the their, their first project or operation and they expect them to have success. Um, a lot of organizations, and, and this is also where leaders can take a look at their current processes and say, you know, I want to allow this person to learn and grow. And what a great opportunity is to have them watch an experienced Scrum Master at work. And so, so, so another, another great, uh, great example. Okay. Um, the next one, I'll, uh, and again, any any other thoughts on that um, about sponsorship and uh, not sponsorship, but um, autonomy and self direction? Um, before going too far, an, another one is leaders can ensure, and I think mo most importantly, is that new employees have an idea about what is our organizational mindset. So our, our goals, yeah, great. Some networking, introductions. Um, and I've seen organizations that have a whole checklist of, of activities they want new employees to do. So they may meet the finance person, they may um, go sign for some equipment, they must attend at least one monthly town hall, whatever it might be. Um, and Kelly, that's a, that's a great one. Um, and I think also as far as organizations and, and speaking from a, a what's a leadership support activity is define those processes, define what's specific to um, each, each of your individuals. Uh, and, I, and I think leadership can also help promote the correct mindset. And by mindset, I mean to empower agile human resources, you have to have a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. 
And so what does that what does that mean to you guys out there in the in the webinar? Uh, fixed versus a growth mindset in agile. So so while you're thinking, uh, I think the mindset is very fundamental to to uh, to to the agile methodology. Uh, the mindset is driven by the leaders. Yeah, great. Terrell says someone who can adapt to new situations. Growth is uh, seeking opportunities to learn new experiences. And so if we can have someone who is open to those new ideas who can learn and grow. It fits into everything we've talked about today. Our continuous improvement, it fits into our desire to um, even work as a member of a team. Um, the, the right mindset can, can really kind of be the oil that gets all the gears going and, and helps the team flow better. If you're willing to continue to generate new ideas, learn something new, try a new technique, try a new methodology, and that's why Agile can be very powerful in the human resources arena because every organization is going to have some challenges. And so when you think about having a growth mindset, if you are eager to, to learn and try some new things, uh, you can address those, those challenges. Okay, um, we're going to keep going to kind of the next topic, which is delivering value. And so very important to the Agile methodology is that we deliver value frequently. So in the terms of human resources, um, we have to create teams that that are able to, we have to create teams and environments as, as leaders in, in, in HR that can meet deadlines, that can deliver on promises. And I think that that's, that's, that's very important. Um, and so what are, what are ways that, that we can deliver value within human resources? Any, any thoughts on that? What kind of projects are you working on that deliver value? I'll throw up a, a common one that comes up in my classes, and that is, you know, creating a new training program. Um, whether it's new and uh, a self-paced training program or uh, not just an annual training requirement, but something that's of value where employees get trained in a skill or ability that, that's useful to them on the job. Any other thoughts on, on how, do we, how do we create value? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie it all back in at the end. Um, we create, uh, one way we create value is by getting feedback. And so if we, as leaders, are serving our employees and we're serving the customer, is that we have multiple touch points where we engage those employees, we engage those customers, and we find out how well are we meeting your needs or requirements. And so um, we as leaders have to do some, some kind of feedback loops. Yeah, a simple one is a survey. Everybody loves surveys. Um, but a simple one is a survey, um, but you can get some feedback. Um, uh, Terrell says, set aside resources needed for training or certifications that add to the organization's capability. That's a great one. And I, I always say that when you, when you can create that, uh, an opportunity, you know, a learning and development opportunity for your employees that adds value to them as well as the organization, it's a win-win situation. And so when everybody wins, we're, we're it, you know, employees' uh, satisfaction goes up, uh, employee motivation goes up, and productivity goes up. So there's so many uh, great impacts. And just the opposite, when employees don't have the resources or they feel that they have to pay for every 
learning opportunity themselves, then their motivation is also decreased. Their productivity is decreased. Great, great. And so, yeah, it's a great, a great point. Yeah, you can tell a lot about an organization um, by how they allocate their resources, yes. So again, value, and I think if we look at uh, the way of work across uh, the globe, it's changed a lot. And so it's not just uh, delivering um, products and services for profit, it's also, it's more shifted to delivering value now. And so your employees, all employees, want to be valued and they want to create value. So we as leaders have to set that up for them. And then last but not least, really the last topic I want to throw out there for our group is understanding the employee experience. So effective leadership is, is crucial to, you know, how do we implement agile human resources? How do we improve the overall employee experience? Experience. So from my perspective, uh, one of the ways that leaders can do that is they have to understand the human resource processes. And so they have to have a deep understanding uh, from the pre-hire stage to the initial hiring stage, to employee development, to employee performance management, all the way through the exit stages of, of an employee's journey. And so what, what happens when a leader understands all those stages of the human resources of the employee experience? What, what do you, what is, what is this, um, anybody from, what does anybody understand about that? Um, one, one thing that it does is it allows it allows our, our leaders to, if they can understand that process, they can now go back and say, I understand where obstacles are. I understand where some of the challenges are. And then once leaders understand where the challenges are, or where some potential disconnects are between, uh, you know, just we'll just, just say during the the hiring process is now they can try to set some actions up or talk to one of their cross-functional human resource teams to identify some potential solutions to fixing, you know, hiring and onboarding problems. Um, and it goes back to how do we hire the right talent? How do we retain the right talent? And those are all things that leadership leaders can can influence. Uh, any any thoughts on how how leaders can 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 do that influencing or reduce obstacles? Thoughts, uh, and I can speak to uh, a couple organizations that I've been um, working with. Is um, and so one organization that I'm working with right now has basically identified five primary human resource challenges, and they built a cross-functional team to address each challenge. Uh, those cross-functional teams, uh, again, took some leadership involvement to decide which ones of those are, putting the right people in place to solve these challenges, and they allowed these agile teams to, to, to basically to come up with an iterative process to solve these human resource challenges. 
And so within these cross-functional teams, they were given a time frame. They're given a, um, uh, a schedule of, of how many iterations they are going to do. And they're going to iterate. And after every iteration of generating ideas and prototyping solutions, they will get feedback. And so what leaders can do is, is take the time to create systems that generate ideas, solutions to current challenges, and then they can test those ideas out, get feedback on those ideas. Is this a good idea or not? And then they take those ideas and then they can implement them. Um, and they, again, it goes back to what Terrell said before about prioritize, prioritizing is that they can take the best ideas, implement them with feedback, and then monitor the performance or, or see how well those, those changes are, are, are going to do, whether it's a change to a communication process or we're going to reduce our timeline, um, our, we're going to reduce our, uh, our, our timeline for, um, for, for background screening and, and reduce the overall hiring or onboarding timeline. So things like that could help. And so as we think about it, I know we're we're winding down and I just wanna give the time for some open questions and answers, but um, as we understand the, the, employee, the employee experience is that the more we can create some collaboration among employees at different levels, if we can collect feedback on a regular basis, gather some data points, uh, leaders can help shape their organizations. Um, they can help them shape them towards uh, growth and success, uh, creating that culture that 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 uh, prioritizes that employee satisfaction, and ultimately satisfied employees work a little bit better. They're more productive. So. Um, Again, if you would like to do some further reading on there or you'd like to uh, discuss this in, in one of the upcoming courses, we do an exercise called employee journey mapping uh, as part of my agile human resources class. Um, it's very effective. We walk through all the stages of employment and we talk about what that employee is experiencing, feeling, doing, um, what are their obstacles, and that allows us to uh, make adjustments to our processes. Um, and actually, I will be talking about that on an upcoming webinar on, I believe it's July 12th. Um, so please take a look at, you can look at the soft ed site, or I know I sent uh, an invite out, but we will talk about uh, navigating in, uh, some design thinking and also an upcoming webinar on employee journey mapping. So. Uh, we we'll look forward to seeing any of you if you would like to join those as well. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up, but uh, I would like any any additional questions. Uh, please feel free to join in or put them in the chat. Um, so kind of in conclusion, you know, navigating uh, agile human resources um, by harnessing leadership support is is essential to success. It's not easy but it definitely can be done. We have to use the right approach. And so we have to create work environments that are centered around collaboration, innovation, uh, high performance. Um, Agile human resources is about setting some good goals, uh, working in an iterative manner as we achieve those goals. And it, that allows us to help stay ahead of the competition, to hire the right talent for the right jobs, retain the right people, promote the right people, and continue that learning and development experience for, for your employees so that you maintain the right competencies as work is ever changing. And so the success of Agile Human Resources is, is, is very dependent on, on, on leadership support. And so 
not only do we have to be talking the talk, we also have to walk the walk. So leaders have to model the right, right behaviors. Um, leaders also have to listen to that employee feedback. And oftentimes that also includes providing the right coaching, mentorship, and developmental opportunities for your employees. And then finally, you know, when you have all those strategies in place, you know, employees will be motivated to thrive and not just survive in your organizations. They will be motivated to participate and they'll feel psychologically safe enough to participate and generate ideas. So again, leadership is essential to agile human resources and the success. So with that, uh, I think that is all I have for today. Uh, thank you for uh, your participation today and your engagement. You guys have been great. Uh, lots of great feedback and, and, and comments in here. Uh, please, please uh, uh, don't hesitate to uh, reach out or sign up for other future webinars. And I look forward to seeing you. Uh...